The third type of sample we want to look at in this section is a cluster sample. Now a cluster sample is when the population is, into, is grouped into non-overlapping clusters. One of the clusters is randomly selected and all the individuals within that cluster are in the sample. Now it can actually be more than one cluster, so I should say one or more. Let me put it right there. One or more of the clusters are randomly sampled. Um, it doesn't have to just be one. But the important thing is that all of the individuals within that cluster are sampled. All right, so we can see here again the U.S. Census data. Um, the Medicaid regions are breaking down along the U.S. Census regions. So Region 1 was the Northeast, but Medicaid breaks that into two divisions. And then Midwest, two divisions, and so on. All right, so for example, I live in Michigan, and when I drive to, you know, North Dakota. I know that North Dakota counts according to the census in the Midwest region, but it does not feel very similar at all, right? So these states probably seem more similar, right? They're more plain states. And these are the clustered around the Great Lakes states, right? Okay, so um, what we want to do is we want to create a cluster sample within these with three clusters. So what that means is we have nine divisions. We're going to choose three of them randomly, but then all the states in those clusters are sampled. See the difference? So I want to choose, um, on a calculator it'd be pretty easy, but on StatCrunch we have to do a little bit more work for it. Again, this is one of the few things that StatCrunch is a little bit um, worse about. And I can go back to the census regions. It doesn't really make any difference. It doesn't matter where I go. Um, I can do this pretty much in any blank um, stack crunch uh, table. I don't even need any particular table open. All right, so I want to simulate. So you click data, simulate, and you want to choose uniform. Uniform is the one where every single, in this case, division is equally likely. Now I want to choose one or three rows and one column. So I want them to be listed. And then I want to choose from one to nine. So it's going to choose a sample of three, basically, and list them in one column. And it's going to choose numbers between one and nine. And then I can split it across columns, or I can stack with a sample ID. I think if I leave split across columns, it'll still be OK. I'm going to leave it alone. And I'm going to round to zero decimal places. I don't need decimals out of this. I need whole numbers. So I'm going to say, you know, because I want 2, 3, not 2.364. That doesn't do me any good. All right, I'm going to click Compute. And there they are. It shows 4, 9, and 3. There it is. So again, we chose Data, Simulate, Uniform. So we write that down. Data, Simulate, no need to load anything, although technically we didn't really need to load in the systematic one either because you could still have done this. Then you chose three rows, one column, and then we chose min of one, max of nine. And that's how we did it. And when we did that, oops, let me go back and see my sample. It was four, nine, and three. So what that means is that we would select everybody or all of the states in Division 4, Division 9, and Division 3. Every single state, all of them would get sampled, right? So all states from those three divisions. With the calculator, it's the same idea. You would make the calculator choose rand int from one to nine and make it choose. Well, we don't really want a repetition, so I'll have it choose four. Just in case there's repetition, I can throw it out. So I can choose math, probability one more time, randint. And again, you can choose randint, no repeat, and then you would just tell it three. But I'll leave randint and choose four. Oh, goodness, I'll have to do it again. 6111 won't work. <laughs> so when that happens, that's all right. I'll see, there you go, 7784. So we'll toss out that second 7 and just make it 7, 8, and 4. That's why you do the more than you need, right? I chose 4. So it gave me 7, 8, and 4. I would choose all states.
from those four divisions. That's my sample, right? So either way. Now, it might seem like stratified and cluster are similar, and they are in a certain respect because they want non-overlapping groups. But the reasons for creating those groups and how those groups work are different from each other. Stratified, when you're breaking the strata, it's actually the strata containing members with a certain characteristic. So you, those strata are all similar. So strata one is similar to, um, excuse me, is everybody in it is the same. Strata two, everybody in it's the same. So an example I could give you would be like in a four-year school, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Those are strata, right? So let me give you an example, right? Or let's say, um, I'm just trying to think of these states here. Well, they're kind of broken into strata but by the region, right? So the region, that's the strata, right? So these are all have qualities in common, and these all have qualities in common. These are the Midwest states. These are the southern states, et cetera. So they're breaking off of um, a particular strata for a reason. So these are regions, right, that have different effects for the census, whereas this cluster, or Again, I would, if I was thinking of high school, I would think freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, right? Those would be strata, right? Or age groups, right? So 15 to 25, 25 to 35, 35 to 45, right? That would be strata. And a cluster tends to be geographical groupings. Um, each cluster consists of members with all the characteristics. You're going to get all sorts of states and all sorts of different regions, right? That's a cluster sample. The key to it is, and you know, how am I going to tell which one's which? When you do a stratified, you take some of the members of each strata. So you get every single strata, but you get a few people from each. So if you imagine it like a layer cake, stratified camp sampling is when you cut a wedge through the layers of the cake. So you have all your different strata, right? Freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, and you cut into it and take a wedge and take a little piece of each of the regions, right? Okay. So you take a sample of all strata, right? Every single strata you're going to get a little bit of. With the cluster, same layer cake, whoop, if I can draw it again, right? Same layer cake. I didn't draw as good a job. And then what you do is you say, hey, some of those layers, I'm going to take the whole layer out of it. So you take only some of the clusters, but you take everybody. See the difference? Right? Rather than taking a little bit of all the clusters, you take some clusters and take everybody in them. They're like opposites of each other. Right? So this is everyone or every state or whatever in a few clusters as opposed to a few from each strata you take everyone in a few clusters so you take whole layers out of the cake and you eat them <laughs> but you leave the rest alone so i never know what this top layer tastes like because i never took a sample out of it right and there are reasons why you want to do that so i mean the cake idea is a little weird but suppose these were hospitals right so these are all the hospitals in michigan and we don't need to look at you know the icus for all of them we just need to grab a few of them and just pull them out and look at their data something like that and this would be like let's take you know i don't know the neonatal unit from every single hospital in michigan right so if you do that there, you might have different reasons for doing each one. They both might be valid for depending on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to draw a conclusion about. All right, the last kind of sample is a convenient sample, which we referred to before and we told you it was terrible, and it still is. <laughs> right? It's based on convenience and easily obtained individuals, but it's not inherently based on randomness. So when you see internet polling, um, internet polling is, is a classic. Okay. So internet polls are terrible. You know, who should win, blah, 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 or so-and-so, right? Person on the street interviews, which I know they love to do on like, you know, late night television shows, although not right now because it's in COVID-19 times, but generally, you know, they'll interview people on the street. That It's terrible. It's convenient sampling. 
those samples are self-selected. The people select themselves to be part of the sample. Um, it's also called voluntary response. And they're awful, right? So in general, um, since they're not based on randomness, they are biased and not statistically um, valid. Convenient samples are not. Um, again, with the when people call into those shows like American Idol and things like that, or you know. So you think you can dance or whatever the latest show is, right? When they do that, that's self-selecting. They're selecting themselves to participate. They're calling in. They have to care and they have to want to spend the money on the text or whatever, right? So if they're volunteering for a response, that's not going to be the same as people that would not volunteer. So convenient samples are atrocious. Again, they're fun to watch on television for the sake of, you know, a random television show contestant. But in general, they're not good. All right, so we have our five types of samples. The simple random sample we learned about in 1.3, then systematic, convenient, stratified, and cluster. Of those two, systematic and, oh, excuse me, uh, stratified. Stratified there and cluster there are the two hardest to discern between the two. So you'll want to use that table on the previous page to help. All right, so the Gallup organization plans to conduct a poll of New York City residents. Computers are used to generate telephone numbers that are automatically called. Uh, that's a classic simple random sample. It doesn't get much more classic than that. All right, a marketing expert for MTV is planning a survey in which 500 people will be randomly selected ah, from each age group. So they're selecting 500 from each age group. That's stratified. They're getting a bit from each of the strata. So that's D. An ABC News reporter polls people as they pass them on the street. Oh, I love it when they do that. That is convenience, and it is terrible. All right, a Johns Hopkins University researcher surveys all cardiac patients in each of 30 randomly selected hospitals. Ah, that's cluster. It's all cardiac patients in each of those, right? So they're choosing 30 hospitals. That's Those are the layers of the cake, but they're eating all of the cake layers, right? So the whole thing. A U.S. Customs agent pulls over and inspects every 125th car that passes <laughs> through the Detroit-Windsor Tunnel. That is systematic, right? Tunnels, um, I was thinking, they. I actually did this in Mexico when we landed in Cancun. They had you flip a switch, and it would tell you green light or red light. If you got a red light, you would have to be pulled over, if you will, and they would search your bags. And it was completely a systematic sample. I could tell what they were doing, so it was just a switch. And so it would just randomly choose, you know, every 50th person to be pulled over and have their stuff gone through. A General Motors researcher has partitioned all registered cars into categories of, and this makes sense, there are categories subcompact, compact, midsize, intermediate, full size. Those are different kinds of cars. And she's serving 200 randomly selected cars from each category. Ah, so she's getting a group from each. That's stratified. She's not getting all the midsize cars in the world because that would be crazy. She couldn't do that. But she could get a sample of midsize cars, a sample of intermediate, a sample of full size. She's doing a little bit of each. That's stratified. College of Newport conducts a study of student drinking by randomly selecting 10 different classes and interviewing all the students. So they get 10 classes, 10 layers of the cake, but they select everybody, right? The whole layer gets eaten. That's cluster. And American Idol, I already mentioned it, America's Got Talent, pick your show, chooses its winner based on the opinion of viewers who call in and support, right, their favorite singer. That is convenience which is c it's not good but they do it all the time of course they don't really want a statistical output they just want to know who won eh, you know for their purposes i'm sure it works but in general it's not the way we should conduct surveys and studies now one last comment to make which is multi-stage sampling in real life people don't just do a cluster sample they do a cluster and a, and a simple random and another cluster they, they stack these on top of each other so most large-scale surveys and stuff like that do combinations they don't just do one of these they do more than one of these right and we'll learn more about what the minimum sample is needed to 
find accuracy and reliability in chapter nine. There are formulas for this that you'll actually know by the final exam. So look out for that. Won't that be fun? Um, that'll be in chapter nine and actually chapter 11. Um, it's not just chapter nine. We'll see them in both of those chapters. So hooray, we'll worry about that then. Like how do we decide 200? How do we decide 50 is enough? How do we decide, right? And the answer is eh, there are reasons for what we do, but we'll learn that later in chapters nine and 11. In general, it has to do with that inference between a sample and a population and how accurate you want to be.